Okay, hello. Uh, let's start the session now, just a second. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this DP 900 session. Myself, Archie Desai, I'm your host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will dare to help you out. Then moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question. We bruise through our offering and also give complimentary advisory service to clients who wish to modernize their framework and manage. Then the synergetic solution offering that is a persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales and pre sales training solution practice playbook solution and architecting solution. Then what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained to build appear for the exam and get certified. This is skilling learning. Here you can advance yourself. First you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification and expert level certification. In fundamental certification, we are providing you AJ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we are providing you many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we are providing you AJ 305, SC 100, PL 600, and AJ 400. Also, we have special specialty certification that is AZ120, AZ140 and AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. I already shared contact details on chat box. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead, training is uh, organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Uh, under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Uh, then Azure Tech community for Pune Kars. Then emerging technology community for Surat Kars. Then Azure Tech community for Nagpur Guys, that you just have to install the meetup and, and you can follow our communities there. <laughs> then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this training, uh, Mr. Shajish Sheikh. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as a training consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to more about the topic and benefit of it. In one day webinar, we are providing you one day webinar, then self learning plan. We are providing you uh, DP 900 learning achievement batch. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated batch. Then mentoring and exam prep session. If you have any question, you can submit a question on our feedback form. Then knowledge assessment by before the end of this session, we are providing you DP 900 assessment link. You can uh, give your test and check your knowledge. Uh, this is DP 900 learning achievement batch. Here, here you have to follow the step and you will get the activated batch. Make sure guys, you just uh, follow on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming information and webinars. <coughs> Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic. Our speaker, he will continue ahead. Hello, good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. So let us start with uh, 
DP nine hundred. What is DP nine hundred and what are your expectations from this course? So, can you tell what are your expectations from this course or from this webinar? Anybody? Okay. So for learning the data fundamentals, for doing the certifications, what is Azure? See, basically, this course is specifically for data fundamentals. How Azure helps you in the data fundamentals? How Azure takes care of your databases? So I know like most of you are from developer background or whatever it may be the background. You may have the knowledge of the database. You may have handled some databases on premises. So here we are going to learn how to handle databases on the cloud. So we will be exploring the fundamentals of data. What is database? What are the different types of databases available and so on. So you may have heard of Azure. Now, what is Azure? Azure is nothing but a cloud platform. On the cloud, how to handle the database. On the cloud, how to do programming. On the cloud, a lot of things are there. I mean, it's not only the database part. AI, programming, web applications, and so on. You can take the help of this cloud environment basically once you do dp 900 i mean i recommended that you also do the azure fundamentals also az 900 so you'll get a clear idea what azure is about so is anybody familiar with az 900 azure fundamentals No. Now this webinar is basically on DP nine hundred. So here basically we'll be just focusing on the core database concepts and the roles and services. So in this module, we'll be learning the data formats, options of storing the data in files and databases, transactional processing, professional roles, and common cloud services, which are used by the data professionals. So let us understand what is the data part here. Now, what is data? See. We may do development, we may do lots of programming work, but the entire thing depends on the data. Because on the data, the entire thing is process. 
So whatever the data we have, we should know how to handle the data. We should know how to handle the data, how to prepare the data, how to make provision for the data, how as a professional, we should be able to make the data from one source to the other source. So complete information we should have about the data processing part. We may have done data processing at the premise level, on premise level. But here we are talking about the data processing on the cloud platform. So data has to be collected and stored, which is required for each and every business work to do. Any small task you do, you have the data. You want to store the address of the people, you want to store the product information, you want to store the order information. All the information has to be a part of your data. So each business would like to grow their revenue and make profits. So the capability of capture the data and store the data is the basic requirement in the software development. So have anybody worked with the databases, any databases in on-premise? Hello. See, we want to, I would be happier if we may do a lot of interactions. You can do the interactions by putting the things on the chat so that I can know what is there. Whether you know the concepts or you have worked with the concepts, so we want this more fruitful, this webinar. So some of you have said that you have worked on SQL. Some of you have said, no. Some of you said my SQL. See, when I say on premise, see, on premise means not on the cloud, locally. On premise is not a data base or anything, but on premise means on the local machine. So, some of you may have worked on the local machines in MySQL or Oracle or SQL or whatever it may be the scenario. And when I say on cloud, that means in Azure environment. So make this concepts clear because a lot of time we be using the word on premise. So on premise means locally on the local system of your machine. So even if you may have your own laptop or own your computer, you may have installed MySQL or Oracle or SQL. That is on premise. Clear? What is on press? Okay. <clears throat> now, what is data? See, in normal meaning, data means what? Information. Data means information and information can be anything. It can be numbers, descriptions, images, anything. Music, videos, photographs, anything can be considered as data. Now, how to organize this data? That is one of the major important part. So we have to organize the data. Why do we require Organization of the data. Why do we require to organize the data? See, we require to organize the data because it should be easily available. We should be able to fetch the data whenever we want. So that is what is one of the most important things. Like see, in your 
day to day and life also you keep certain things in your house correct and you keep in a place such that it is easily searchable it is easily that you can get it the same thing is for the data also whatever data is there we want to store the it on the computer it should be in such a way that it should be easily able we should be able to search the data we should be able to find the information whatever we want we want to query the information whatever we want so that is one of the important things of data processing see data in data processing what happens is you add a record you insert a record you delete a record you update a record now insert update delete these operations are done every day once for example but searching of the data we have to do it every day we have to search the data for whatever information we want whatever the information we want we should be able to retrieve the re data and to retrieve the data for what purpose for reporting purpose so that's why what i said is for data insert update delete operation will be done normally like suppose an employee joins the organization his data will be entered once only or not his data will be entered once only na every day you not enter his name again and again and again but searching his information will be quite often because for salary calculation for reporting purpose for some analysis purpose so that is what is and why we require data to be stored in a proper format so that we can easily retrieve data is it clear hello now when data is stored in what format we store how it should be stored how it should be arranged so that we have to understand the data can be classified as a structured data semi structured data or unstructured data so structured data means what it is properly organized it is properly organized structured way semi structured it is not completely organized some things are organized some things are not organized and unstructured data it can be anything like for example movies videos that is unstructured data so we have to first understand how the data has to be stored whether it is structured data semi structured data or unstructured data and on the basis of that the different products are involved there which database to use for storing structured information which database is used for storing semi structured data which database is used for unstructured data so what is structured data the as i said structured data is in a fixed format it has got a fixed schema so schema means the fields the properties so in terms of data what are the fields here like for example name of the employee is a field salary of the employee is a field address is a field so this is your schema 
this information is made up of your schema. So structured data is a fixed schema. So all the data will have similar fields. And this data will be in tabular format. So in tabular format, what we have here is rows and columns. Columns consist of the fields and rows consist of the data. Like we have customer data, we have product data. So in customer data, what information you will have? And in product data, what information you will have? Can you identify the fields in the product database? Anybody? Product information, what can be there? Hello. Am I audible? The product data means what? Product ID, product name, product rate, product quantity. So that is, you have to decide. You, you have to give the information that this entity consists of what? This entity consists of what? So once you are able to decide okay, this entity consists of what, then you are able to design the structure. So you should be able to identify the properties in an entity. Understood? Like say, for example, I give you a mobile. So this mobile, what will be the field be for storing the mobile data? Can anybody, what will be the fields information be for storing the data, mobile data? By name, cost of the mobile, so mobile name, mobile cost, those are the fields. So you, as an individual, should be able to identify what fields are going to be representing my data. Like for example, customer is there. So customer name, customer ID, customer address. Address may be made up of city, state, pin code. So that way, an entity you should be able to identify. Okay, this entity should have what information? Is it clear? Then semi structured data. Now, semi structured data and structured data. Major difference is what? Structured data will have a fixed set of columns. Semi structured data will be not fixed. Like for example, customer data. 
one customer can have an email address. Another customer may not have an email address. Some customers may have multiple email address. So that is what is unstructured or semi-structured. Like for example, employee information. Now, all employees data is there with employee number, employee department, employee salary, and so on you put up. Passport number. So all employees will have passport number. No. Some employees may have a passport number. Some employees may not have a passport number. Mobile number. Some employees may have one mobile number. Some employees may have two mobile numbers. So that is what is semi-structured data. So to store any structured data, the format of storing the data is JSON. JSON is JavaScript object notation. JSON is the format for storing semi structured data. What is the format for storing structured data? Hello. What is the format for storing structured data? Structured data is stored in a tabular format, which has got a fixed number of columns. And semi-structured data is stored in JSON format, JavaScript object notation. What is unstructured data? Like, for example, documents you are storing, images you are storing, audio, videos, whatever you are storing, which is not properly structured. So, this is called an unstructured data. So, So see here, can you see this? So this is structured data. Customer information is all fixed, na? ID, first name, last name, address, product ID, product name, product price. So this is all structured data. Semi-structured data is this. This is in what format? JSON format. This is what format? JSON format. So first name, last name, address. Address is made up of street address, city, state, postal code. Contact number. Now here this Joe is having two contacts. Home contact and email contact. Whereas the other person is having just one contact. He doesn't have a home contact. So that is what is called as semi-structure. And to store semi-structure data, JSON is used. So this is what is JSON format. What is the... Uh, have, have you come across any other format for representing data apart from JSON? Have you come across or have you seen something like that? Apart from JSON, yes, which one? You can speak also.
apart from json which another format of data representation is there okay put it in the chat box correct xml xml is another format of representing the data so previously what are the applications were there they were basically using xml for storing the information but now json is used because json is lightweight it is lightweight in text simple text format where xml was with the help of tags and it was slightly heavier so as and when technology went on progressing json is used in, in nearly all the types of data processing json is nowadays used even in the mobile applications whatever you are using the mobile apps on your you are using them you send your data that goes in the json format and you get the data in json format and that application converts that json format into the respective ways so that is semi structured data and unstructured data is anything it can be any documents anything with images videos and so on so based on the application the data has to be formatted either in structured format a semi structured format or unstructured format and on that basis the different types of databases which are available we will be using that different types of databases available then you will be using that now how is data stored data can be stored depends on the requirement data can be in a file system data can be stored in a file system with delimited text like you open notepad and you want to store some information the data part that is so each first name last name email address that represents what the headings then the names and each data is delimited with the help of what a comma is delimited with a comma so that is what is file system that depends on the application also like for example this is say in notepad excel data you want to use in excel you have stored the information so excel files are so as what csv file the excel files which represents the data we store it in the format of csv comma separated files some applications have a colon between the field names some application represents a blank space as a delimiter to identify a component and enter a record so spaces are used here so that depends but the format is what file format so file can be stored in local system on a hard disk
but then local system that is only for you for individual person for individual application but normally in it has to be stored on a centralized location where there will be a centralized shareable system where the files will be stored because locally you create the file but then only your application on your laptop you can use them but to make it use centrally it has to be stored on a shareable folder or something that way the type of data store can be structured semi structured or unstructured and it depends on the application also whether it is able to read the information write the information process the information the specific data format whatever they are depends on the number of factors whether it is structured or semi structured on that basis the applications are decided so we discuss what delimited text files so data is often stored in plain text format using notepad or any editor and the format is what delimited with a specific character so those characters can be anything it can be comma separated values it can be tab separated values it can be spaces it can be fixed size of the data so that way how this format shows the information so this is what is files then we have json javascript object notation so here we have customer then customer is made up of first name last name and we have two customers so two records are there. so it depends on the application how to read this and store this information in json format and as of now lot of applications are there and most of the application use this format for processing your data so json format is a hierarchical document schema define objects or entities that have multiple attributes and each attribute may be further an object or a collection of objects a collection of objects so json is basically a flexible format for structured as well as unstructured or semi structured data so here customer is an entity first name last name is an attribute first name last name is a attribute then we have xml extensible markup language so like customer first name is jo last name is jones so in the early 90s and 2000 it was basically used so xml basically uses what tags whatever data is there that is enclosed within your angle brackets which defines your elements and attributes then we have blobs binary large object whatever data we have it is finally stored in what format ones and zeros data is finally stored as ones and zeros and it is the application which displays the data in the readable format 
which is ascii characters a unicode character so data stored as binary which includes for images videos audios documents all these information are stored in binary format like for example you have an application now what are the application is there like okay employee information is there and employee information application is there you enter the employee number you store the id the department the salary etc etc but then at the end they tell you what load a image we want a employee image so that image will be stored on the database side in binary format ones and zero combination now who convert that into ones and zeros the application whatever uh, java language programming you are using or dot net programming you are using or whatever programming language you are using that converts the image into one sans zero which is binary large object data so same way your images can be stored in that format the audio video details can be stored in that format the documents can be stored in that format okay so like somewhere we see na in the application upload your resume upload your profile information so we go to word and upload the word document now for us it is what a word document we are uploading or a pdf we are uploading but for the database it is nothing but blob binary large object data which is nothing but a combination of ones and zeros you see here a combination of ones and zeros then there are specially what are called as file formats optimized file formats now these formats basically optimized for storage space See, it's not necessary that it suppose you are loading an image of 1 gb that 1 gb will be stored there it will be further truncated or optimized for storage purpose so there are specific formats available like avro avro orc so these formats optimizes the data which is large so specifically as per the application they are used so avro is a row based format it was created by apache and each record contains a header information which is nothing but json format and then inside the json format it is further stored in the format of binary information so the application which is there it is using this format is able to read that information to process that information then you have got another format called orc optimized row column format this organizing the data into columns a column further can sub columns and so on so it is basically in a column format all the information is stored that is based on the requirement if you want to use this format there is no hard and fast rule that we have to use this format only So, see, storing of the information is one aspect, and retrieving of the information is another aspect. Like you may be a database person, your job is to store the information. That's all. But to read the information, that is the developer's work. To read whatever the information is there, that is the role of a developer. So he uses whatever format he has got. So that way. you have two people you have got a database expert and a developer mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> then we come to databases. Now, what we have here is called as a relational databases. So there is a relationship maintained here, like product, order, customer, line items. So all are related somehow. So customer data, if you see the symbols here, lines here, is connected to the order. Order information is connected to the line item. And line item is connected to the product. So in a relation database, we have to build up the connectivity like this. Now, why to build up the connectivity? <clears throat> See, any relational database is commonly used to store and query the data. The data is stored in the format of tables. Customer data, student data, products data, order data, sales data. So there are different tables available here. Each table will have a primary key, which is nothing but a unique identifier for a record. So primary key is used to identify a record. Like for example, employee data. Suppose two employees, can two employees have the same name? Hello. Can two employees have the same name? No? Oh, yes. Can two employees have a same name? Yes. But then how will you identify that people? So it should have a primary key. Primary key will identify the two like for example, employee ID. Now, two employees may have the same name, but the IDs will be different, na? So that is what is the very key. So any table, any data you want to store, it should have a primary key to identify the record, whether it is customer data or students data or products data or address data, anything it can be. There has to be a unique identifier to identify that record. So to do this, I mean, there is a concept called normalization. See, any data which is given to anybody to, you will not just open the laptop or open the computer and open the software and start storing the information. The, Data has to go process called as normalization. If you go anywhere, you understand the database part. First thing they will ask you, what is normalization? Any person is there who wants to become a database expert or store the information in the database. He has to normalize the data. Then normalization, what happens? The duplicate data values are eliminated so that it is properly stored and people can access that information. So there will be no duplication of the data. There will be data will be redundancy. All the duplicate information is there, which you remove. We'll see the normalization afterwards, but that is the process finally. So proper data storage is one which is properly normalized. So that no duplicate, no duplication data is there, query can be done easily and so on. So in relational database, you have this concept of 
normalization where when you are doing the normalization you define the primary key you define the foreign key and so on so between the set of tables primary primary key foreign key relationship will be there and with the help of that relationship you manage to link up the tables you manage to link up the tables so that query work will be easier they have non relational databases or as of today what is called as no sql the non relational databases are data based system that don't apply relational schema of the data now here in this example this a fixed schema na customer product order line item customer has got customer id email id so this is fixed schema this is called as fixed schema and it is relational data non relational database what happens is schema is not fixed like i said now one customer can have multiple contacts one employee can have multiple mobile numbers that is non relational database they have key value database in the key value database what happens is there is a key and the value which the key will be a unique key key with a unique key so using that key you process the data using the key we process the data then you have document databases so in this format what happens is in json documentation all this key value information is stored so here if you see so this is non relational databases where we have key value key is 123 and here the value is hammer and dollar 299 key is 162 T two zero five. So this is key value documentation. The data is stored in this format. Then we have document where we store the information in JSON format. We store the information in JSON format. Key is there again, and then the full document is in JSON format. So to access the record of Joe. we have to give the key as 1 that says the record of joe we give the key as 1 so that's why it is called as a document information stored using the key then we have another format called as column family in column family what happens is one column is there which has got further sub columns name address name address product name price so one record will have multiple columns and each column will have further sub columns that is called as a column family so it shows the data in tabular format comprises of rows and columns but you can divide the columns into a further groups known as column families so here what we have is a column family column family of customer column family of products but this is considered still as one record so that is a format for storing the data in a non relational and then we have graph data in graph data the entities are stored as nodes which are further linked to another node to define the relationship 
graph data entities are stored like this so like see here ben ben reports to sue sue is working in a hardware ben also works in a hardware so this is a sort of a graph data representation so here you have application there where you store the data in graph format so it become easier to build up a relationship here in a non relational database it become easier to build up a relationship in a graph data okay is it clear hello what is relational database and what is non relational database hello relational databases and non relational databases is clear if you don't understand please raise your hand i will explain you again okay so don't feel anything is missing or whatever it is we can repeat the topics or repeat the concepts okay so based on your requirement so if tomorrow some tells you that what is relational and non relational database you should be able to identify them identify the data then identify the products for storing the data in a relational format or a non relational format so that is your requirement you should be able to know that relational database how to store the data and how to which product to use non relational which product to use okay see transactional data processing now what is transactional data processing See, you store the data, whatever format may be. But we are not going to store the data for any. Just store the data and leave it. We are not going to store the information and leave it. We have to use that data for processing purpose. We have to use the data for processing purpose. So whatever data is there. it has to be used for processing different types of processing are there like for example business computing all the data which are you are storing it has to be used for business processing na employee information you are storing you are storing the employee information but finally you are going to use that in employee information na are you just put store it put it in the database and forget it no you are going to use the information for calculating the employee salary calculating the departmental total salaries calculating the different departments totals and all those things so for that we have to know the different types of processings and so on the transaction can be anything it can be financial transaction which involves money so if you take up a banking environment it is a transaction na when you when uh, you deposit your salary it's a money transaction we have the salary it's a money transaction so different ways are there for different things the transactions are there and there will be some transactions will be taking place rarely once a month some transactions will be daily 
So like for example, depositing, uh, depositing salary is what? Monthly transaction or daily transaction? Depositing the salary is monthly transaction. Salary deposited will be monthly transaction. Na? You will not deposit the salary every time. Month at the end of the month or first week of the month, our salary is deposited. So that is monthly transaction. But some another application is there. Like order processing. Now order processing is basically what? A daily transaction. Na? Order processing what? A daily transaction. So that way, the transactions are processed. And in daily transactions, the volume of transactions will be very high. Like, for example, you take Amazon, Flipkart. The online transaction processing is very high. No? It's not that. Only you are placing an order. Millions of people around the world will be placing the orders. That is what is online processing. In online processing, once the data is processed, the immediately results are required. Like in online, like I'm saying in order, for example. Now, I also place an order and you also place an order for a specific item. Assume, let us assume that you also place an item for a or place an order for a specific mobile. I also place an order for the same mobile. And it happens that there's only one, there's only one mobile. So who will get the order? The person who places the order first and immediately the mobile stock is updated. So if suppose you are placing the order at first and then I also place an order for that same mobile, I'll get what? Not available. Stock is out. So that is online processing. So that way you should be able to understand the different types of what transactional data processing which are used for business. And then in online transaction processing, you should know asset. See, this asset term is basically used in data processing. Basically used for data processing. Now, if you say somebody, you should tell somebody that. I am a database person and I know data handling and all those things. Somebody will just ask you what is acid. Simple. If you understand acid concept, then you are basically understanding the database concept. So it is automaticity, consistency, isolation, durability. So automaticity is what each transaction is considered a single unit. which succeeds completely or fails completely. So deb debiting account, debiting of account. So you debit and credit. So whether you're putting money from one bank account to another bank account, you're debiting from one bank account and you're crediting what? Another bank account. So if one of the transaction fails, one of the 
transfer gets failed so the transaction is not complete that is automaticity consistency is what transactions can take the data in from one database and transfer it to another database so like for example transferring of account so transferring of amount in from one bank to another bank be complete when the transfer is done when the transfer is done then it is completed and it is called as consistency then isolation each transaction has to be considered as isolation it has got its own environment and in that own environment it has to get executed like for example again i am talking about a bank two people cannot debit or two people cannot credit same time same time debit and credit of the same account should not be done simultaneously so that is that each transaction should be handled in isolation like for example assume assume a scenario like this i am doing what withdrawal of money from my account online i am doing withdrawal of money from my account online at the same time at the same time assume my wife has got a debit card my debit card and she is withdrawing the amount from my account what will happen tell me and let's put the scenario i am withdrawing or transferring some amount online to laptop same time my wife is taking my debit card and working in the atm same time it is a very scenario but that is what is isolation so it should work or it should not work okay your your uh, brijesh you said it should work okay let us take again for the first scenario in my bank account 5000 rupees is there in my bank account there is 5000 rupees i transfer 4000 rupees i do a transaction of 4000 rupees online same time assume that my wife is withdrawing 3000 rupees what will happen i am having a online transaction of 4000 rupees i have got balance 5000 rupees i am doing online transaction of 1000 rupees same time my wife is withdrawing 3000 rupees what will happen if my transaction is happened successfully same time Three thousand rupees getting withdrawn. It will not work, na? It will not work because finally, cash in hand. What I have is what one thousand rupees, na? Cash in hand, I have got is one thousand rupees. So that what is this? Concurrent transactions should not interfere with one another and must result in a consistent database. while the transaction of transfer funds from one account to another is is a another transaction that checks the balance 
must retain the consistency result. So balance checking can't retrieve value from one account that reflects the balance before. So that is what is isolation. The transaction should be concurrent. Transaction should work isolated. And then you have got durability. When a transaction has been committed, it will remain committed. After the account transfer transaction is completed, the revised account balance are persistent so that even the database is were to be switched off, the transaction should reflect when the switch is. So that means once the transaction is complete, your information should be committed, not rolled back. So that another transaction or another whatever is happening, they should get the correct value. So these are the things called as acid. These are the acid things. So when you are handling transactions and whatever it is programming, these rules you to follow. These rules we have to follow. Okay, so that is what we have discussed here. Data is stored in the database, which is optimized for online transaction processing. And transactions are in this automaticity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Okay, let us move forward. Now let us see what is analytical data processing. The analytical data processing uses read only data for processing large volume of historical data or any business metrics. The analytics can be based on snapshots of the given data at a point of time or in a series of snapshots. So that is what is analytical data workloads. The operations data is extracted, transferred, and loaded into a data lake for analysis purpose. See, like we talk about data processing. Now, when you talk about data processing, as I said, what the data can be stored in any format. Data can be stored in what any format. But for processing purpose, that format is not correct. For processing purpose, that format is not correct. So we have to convert that data. We have to convert that data into a proper format so that processing can be done. That is what is called as analytical data workloads. Data from some source is read, transferred into another format, then further transferred into some format, and then finally used for some reports. So here if you see one, two, three, four, data is taken from the database or data is taken from some document, then it is converted into some proper format, and then from that proper format, it is converted into cubes, and then further these cubes are used for reporting purpose, with graphical reports or whatever reports are required. So that is something like analytical data workloads. So large volume of data when it is used, it has to go through some process. 
and that process is something like this see whatever data is there it is extracted transformed and loaded which is called a etl into a data lake for analysis purpose so whatever data is coming from whichever source it has to be extracted converted and loaded into a data lake for analysis purpose data is loaded into a schema of table that means whatever the, you have loaded for analysis purpose it has to be converted into a table format typically in a spark based data lake house okay. so this spark based data warehouse a lake house or data lake these are all products in azure these are all products in azure basically so we have to take the data convert it into tables store it into a data lake house with tabular abstractions files then third part is what in the data warehouse online processing has to be done or convert it into what is called as olap model or a cube now what is a cube any idea what is a cube what is the feature of a cube have you seen a cube everybody See, a cube if you take up all the sides of the cubes are same or not all the sides of the cube are same correct so same way here your data has to be converted into a olap model or a cube so there all the calculations from the tables is stored there all the calculations from particular tables or whatever set of tables are stored there so that means what using the cube you can get the aggregate of all the information you want that means i am looking at the cube from one angle so i see one angle one set of data you are looking at the cube you are also looking at the same cube from another angle and you are looking at the data you get data as per that angle so that is what is a cube from whichever angle you see you will get the data from whichever angle you see you will get that information for further process so the data from the cube will be used for querying the products preparing the reports visualization of the reports dashboards you want to create so you can use that for so here in this diagram you see this is the cube so that means from this stores data is extracted and converted into what tables converted into what tables this can be from one table the data can come from one table or multiple tables anything it can and then from this you have to pick up the dimensions you can create the measures and convert this into a and then use this cube for further visualization of reports so that is what is data workloads in real time scenario where millions of records has to be processed and all then this is done
So a cube is from whichever angle you see, you get data. Like for example, I I'm one person, analyst person. I want to get the information of the customers and their total sales. I want the information of customers and their total sales. So I'll get from this cube. Now you are another user, another requirement is your requirement is that product wise sales I want. I want product wise total sales. So you should be able to get that information also from the same cube. Product wise information you want, you should be able to get. I want customer wise information. I should get the information. Somebody else wants order wise information. He should get the information. So that means from this additional data, I extract the information from different things employee table, products table, orders table, customer table, whatever the tables are there, and work into a proper tabular format, and then use that proper formats to create a cube. And then somebody else comes here and uses this cube for big purpose. That is what is data workflows. Okay, clear? Hello. Hello. Clear. I'll move to the next topic. So any data is there has to go through this data workload concept. That concept is basically for what purpose? Large volumes of data, historical data. Either you create a series of snapshots and then follow this. Okay. Okay, now, what is this now? Knowledge check. How data in a relational table organized? How is data in a relational table organized? In which format? in rows and columns. Which of the following is an example of unstructured data? Comma delimited text, audio video, table with re relational database. Okay. What is the data warehouse? A non-relational database optimized for read and write operations, a relational database optimized for read operations, a storage location, for unstructured data files. A relational database optimized for read operations. That is a data warehouse. See, basically, just now, whatever we does. Whatever we discuss of the survey for now, analytic behavior. The data warehouse has to be used here. And data warehouse is basically used for processing purpose, for read only. Data. Okay. Okay. Now, next is data roles and services. Okay. Okay. We'll take a break. Hello. We'll take a 10 15 minutes break and then continue with the further topics. Okay.
तो नाउ इट इज व्हाट 11:30 है ना व्हाट टाइम है हां 11:45 विल जॉइन बैक ओके
Okay. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Hello, let us start. Yes, sir. Uh, Rushi, you have raised your hand. You got any doubts? Rushi? No doubts? Okay. Okay, then let's start. So, what we discuss is basically what are the process of data processing. Now, in this data processing, we use uh, some terms like uh, data lake house, data warehouse. We use like these terms we see here. And what is the meaning of these terms here? What is a lake house or what is a warehouse? See, a data lake is a common large scale data analytic processing scenario where large volume of file based data form must be collected and analyzed. So, data lake is nothing but Large scale data analytical processing scenario. Data warehouse is a way to store the data in relational schema that is optimized for read purpose only. Data warehouse is created from multiple sources. So some data is in, for example, in uh, SQL format, some data is in table format, some data is in documents, whatever may be the scenario. So all this data is collected and converted into a relational schema for read operations. And the main purpose of this is what? Reporting and data visualization. So we'll be you'll be coming across these terms quite often as we progress. So you should be able to know this. And what is OLAP? OLAP online and analysis process. Whatever data is collected across dimensions at different levels, we should be able to create a drop down view. A drop down view means what? A report. For example, uh, I'm just giving an example where I have a list of city names. Now, if I click on a particular city, say Mumbai, so I should further see the data about Mumbai. In Mumbai, again, all the Different uh, the areas are there. If I click on that area, I should further drill down to that data about that area. That is what is a drill down data. Okay, so let us see what are the different types of people working here. A data scientist, data analyst, and business. 
data scientists might work directly with the data files in a data lake to explore the model data. A data analyst might query the table directly in the data house to produce the reports using visualization. And business users consume the aggregated data in an analytical model in the form of reports and dashboards. So you will come across these words, these people who works in the database. So you've got a data scientist, data analyst, and business user. So what are the roles of these people? A data administrator, data engineer, and a data analyst. A administrator manages the data, gives permission to the users, store backup, takes the backup, restores the data, perform login, logout, startup database, and so on. And data engineer, manages the infrastructure and processing of the data integration across organization. Performing transfer of the data using pipeline. So his job is pick up the data from one source, pick up the data from another source, combine them together, creating a pipeline, and transform the data into some system. And data analyst explores and analyzes the data to create reports. But there are different tools available for creating visualization reports and chart data getting from the data warehouse. So these are the three key job roles that deal with the data in most of the organization. Each person has having his own different roles. So here, We have a data administrator, we have got a data engineer, and analyst. So administrator provides and manages the data, security, access rights to individual users, backups, optimization, all this is the work done by the data administrator. Engineer do, does the ETL process. Data integration into pipelines and ETL process. Creating warehouses and all those things. Transforming the data from one source to another source is the work of an engineer. An analyst uses some tools for reporting purpose. So we see here operation data workloads that is Azure SQL, we got Azure databases, Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Storage. So these are different databases. So SQL Server, Azure Database, MariaDB, MySQL. PostgreSQL, so these are the different databases. Cosmos DB, highly scalable and non-relational database engine. Azure storage, file storage, block storage, table storage, hierarchical storage, so all these are different workloads of operating the data. Then we have got analytical data workloads, which are called as SaaS and C. Now what is SaaS and PaaS? See, in this, again, when you are working in 
Azure to come across this terminology IASS, PASS, SASS, infrastructure platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, structure as a service. Now, what are these terms? Anybody has any idea? What is PAS, TAS, and IS? Hello. So let us understand what is are these services because that is the basis of Azure. And when to use the meaning of that. That is important for a person here. See, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Now, you take a scenario like this. We have on-premise, which is called as private cloud or which is on the system. So all the things we manage, data access, we manage, application, we manage, runtime, we manage, operating system, virtual machine, fuse, networking, storage, everything we manage. So that is on-premise. Now coming to infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So what we manage and what the cloud provider manages, the differentiation we do like this. See, in infrastructure as a service, the application, runtime, operating system, virtual, we manage, virtual machines and all, we manage. What does the cloud manage? Networking, storage, and compute. Networking, storage, and compute. That the cloud provider manages. That means in this exam, in our case, let us say Azure, Microsoft. Microsoft manages the compute work, networking, all the things, and the storage of the information Microsoft manages. So that is infrastructure as a service. Platform as a service, data access, and application, we manage. But other things, runtime, operating system, virtual machines, computes, networking, storage, are all managed by the cloud product, that is Microsoft. And software as a service, data and accessing the data we manage, but other things, the application running operating system, virtual machines, computes, networking, storage, all is maintained by the cloud provider. So this is the basic difference of I infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So when you'll be going through the topics, basically, they'll say that, okay, this concept is used as a pass, or this is used as infrastructure as a service. So you should know, okay, what is infrastructure as a service? What is platform as a service? And what is software as a service? Because when you go through the documentation of cloud, most of the time you'll come across these three terms. What does this three, these three terms of? Okay. So if you see here, there's a product called as Microsoft as a Microsoft. 
matrix of fabric works as a softer service. Okay, so data integration, data lake house, data warehouse, data science, real time analytics, data visualization, all is handled by Microsoft Fabric. Platform as a service, Azure Synapse Analytics, Azure Data Breaks, Azure HD Insight. These are all working, doing the role of platform as a service. So this is what is cloud services of the, the data. So these are different services which are available in Azure for doing all these things. Which of the following is responsible for data administration? Which role is mostly data factory to define a data pipeline for ETL process and which service would you use as SaaS solution for data analytics? Backup and restoring database is handled by data administrator. Data engineer does the work of ETL process creating the pipelines and all. And fact, Microsoft Fabric use as a software as a service for data analytics. Okay, so that's the end of the first module. So any doubts in this first module? So let us proceed further to the next module. So next module is explore fundamentals of the relational data in Azure. So coming back again to relational tables. As we saw what data is stored in tabular format, a table has got rows and columns and all columns have a data type and all rows have the same columns. So this is the picture of a relational table. ID, name, middle name, last name. These are all the columns. Joe, David, Jones are the rows. So you have got a customer table, you have got the products table, order table and line item.
Now let us see what is normalization. Let us understand what is normalization. See, it is a term used by database professionals for schema designing. Schema means the structure that minimizes the data duplication and enforces data integrity. So, in that, what has to be done is we separate each entity into table, have the attributes as a column, as a unique identifier for the role as a primary key and has a foreign key to link up the multiple entities. So this is a process, I mean to say, anybody who goes into the database system, he has to know what is the normalization. Because see, anybody gives the data anyhow, stores the data anyhow. And then afterwards, what happens? You find problems to query the data or to store the data. So that's why in the beginning, before the database was designed, we have to go through this process of normalization. So in that, we have to define the table. We have to define the columns in that table. We have to specify which is the primary key. And then we also have to require which is the foreign key to link up the two tables. And in some cases, primary key can be a composite primary key made up of multiple columns. Normally, what a primary key is made up of one single column. But if scenarios are there where we create a composite primary key, which is of multiple columns. So if you see here, this is raw data. This is what? Raw data. Sales dates raw. Order number, order date, customer, products. Quantity. But if you see the data, there is duplicate. There is duplication of the data. Like the customer information, the customer information is repeated. Can you screen? Hello. Yes or no? Like Sanjeev has given a comment that we are unable to see the screen. Can you see my screen? Okay, 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 yeah. So we are discussing normalization. So we have raw data here, order number, order date, customer quantity. Now if you see here, order number is repeated, customer information is repeated, even products information is repeated. So this data is not properly normalized because see, a layman, a normal person may not know what is the concept of normalization. He may just store the data anyhow. Or like, for example, uh, we take a scenario like a school, for example. A school is not using computer. But they keep records, correct, of the student's name, student fees, student marks, and all those things. So they may just 
open a register and just note down the things register about the students but then tomorrow when they decide that they want to computerize the data they want to use computers then anyhow they will not just uh, open the computer open uh, software and start storing the data they have to normalize the data whatever is duplicate they have to eliminate that so here first everything is put down into a table like customer table where the customer name customer data is there product table product name product price product id that is there order inform order number order date and order is for which customer and line item that means in that order how many items are there like for order number 100 1000 there are two items item number 1 for product id 123 item number 2 product id 202 so that way how this is normalized that way how this data is normal there is no thing here as duplication of the data there is a properly a primary key defined and a foreign key defined like for example in the customer table customer id is the primary key customer id is the primary key in the order table order number will be the primary key customer will be the foreign key customer id is the foreign key same way in the products product id is the primary key in in the line item there are two foreign keys order number is a foreign key and product id is a foreign key so the purpose of a foreign key is for to link up the tables the purpose of the foreign key is what to link up the table so whenever i want to take out a report that i want to print the customer name and the order number the so customer information i'll get from the customer table order information i'll get from the order table using the foreign key so that is what's the purpose of a foreign key and how to come to this conclusion is with the help of normalization it's a process where we can say simply that raw data we convert into a normalized format okay okay that is normal now come to sql structured query language so it's the standard language to be used with all the relational database so whatever the relational database we have sql server mysql oracle postgres sql they all use sql query language this sql query language is a standard maintained by and see an iso so sql in oracle and sql in my sql sql in sql server more or less is the same slight difference will be there depending on the functionalities what are available in each database in each database different functionalities will be there which will be additionally used
so here what we have is called as a data definition language which is made up of commands like create alter drop rename these commands are required like for creating the table for altering the table dropping the table or renaming the table the first thing is that we have to create a table by finding the schema this is the schema of the table that is product id it is integer and it is a primary key name where care not null price it is decimal it can be null so it creates this schema creates the scheme so these commands come under the category as ddl data definition language then grant deny revoke these commands comes under the category called as data control language these commands comes under the category as data control language grant grant means what you giving the rights to the person see i have i am the table owner for example i have created this table i am one person now you want to use my table you want to use the table so i will give you the rights i will give you the rights what to do on this table whether you want you can insert the record or update the record or select the records so i can give the rights here so grant select insert update on product to user 1 so user 1 can do what insert the records update the records and set the record he cannot delete the records because that grant statement has not been given to him so this way these are the dcl command data control language and then we have dml data manipulation language third update delete select insert a record update the record delete the record select the record so here we fire we are firing the select command from products where price is more than 2.50 order by price so what we are doing here is we are saying that from this product table pick up the two columns name and price which record pick up where the price is more than 2.50 and how to populate the data in what format order by price that means sort the data on the price field and display the data so this way the sql query language has to be used either for ddl commands or data dcl command or dml commands apart from tables now here what created is the tables apart from the table we have got some other objects also available which are used for some purpose which are used for some purpose like example we have got views we have got what are called as view now views are virtual tables we can say views are what virtual tables created from the table views are virtual tables created from the physical table so like for example i want to display always the customer data and the order data i want to display customer data and the order data together so i can create a view and keep it i can create view and keep it so the command is create view and the view name like here the view name is what deliveries select order number order date address and city now order number and order date is coming from the orders table 
address and city is coming from the customer's table. So now the view will be created. So whenever I say select star from delivery, I'll see this data. Order number, order date, address and city. So this is the purpose of the view. So view is not a physical, view does not physical data. The view uses the data from the tables. So mainly the views are used for reporting purpose, designing reports. For that purpose, the views are used. Then we have got stored procedure. A stored procedure is a predefined set of statements which can be executed whenever you want. So a stored procedure is a predefined program, you can say. You can say a small program. It's an object, a part of the database. Like here, create a procedure called rename product. Product ID and name, you're giving them as a parameter. And then what command to execute? Update product table, set name equal to a new name, ID is equal to product ID. So here in this example, the original name for ID equal 204 was branch. But by giving this command, it has changed branch to spanner. So we say execute procedure name, ID, and the new name. So that way, how the procedure is created and how it is executed, and whenever you want to execute, you can give this command. Now, the main purpose of a procedure is what? First of all, the procedure is having the code which is already compiled. All the commands what you give here, that is compiled first automatically and kept. Second thing is that this stored procedure can be called externally from any program. Say you are writing a program in Java and you want to access the database. Call the procedure. You want to have the program written in .NET, call the procedure. So basically in real time scenario, what happens is anybody is not allowed to access the database directly. Nobody is allowed to access the database directly. So they will be told that, okay, create, use this stored procedure. They will be told that the use this stored procedure. That's all. So whatever the language of programming is there, in that, say, use this stored procedure. Now that person who is a developer, he will just use the commands to call the stored procedure. He will not be accessible directly to the database. So that is the main purpose of a stored procedure. Not giving permissions to allow the database directly write stored procedure. Stored procedure, who will write? A stored procedure will be written by the database person. Whoever is the database developer, he will write the stored procedure to so add a record, to delete a record, to print the records, print the data from multiple tables. All these things the people will, person will do there. Now in the application, whatever may be the application, Java or a .NET, to add a record, make use of the stored procedure. Print the records, make use of the stored procedure. So that way is the importance given to the stored procedure.
then we have got another thing called as indexes what is the index see basically if you take in simple terms the index is like a index which is available in your books the index which is available in the books what do you do with that index go to a particular page so if you want to go to a particular chapter or you just open the index find out the page and go to that so directly it becomes quick faster way to go to that specific page the same way indexes are created here for searching the particular records and getting the records quickly now by default by default indexes are always created on the primary key a table will be having a index created on the primary key by default but suppose you want to search something say by city or by salary or by state anything it can be you create a index for that field so when you fire a select statement which is querying the database using that field the index will come into the use and fetch you the data quickly so index is used for that purpose so like see here create index product name on product so in the product table we have got the name field and on the name field it is creating the index all the data will be available in the sorted order by name so suppose here in this example you fire a query select something from product table name is equal to spanner so directly it will search for the index and go to the spanner record it doesn't have to scan the data from the first record up to the end record so that is the purpose of a index and unnecessary you don't have to create index in a table can have multiple indexes on multiple fields but just for name sake you don't have to create indexes because indexes are uh, overhead indexes are uh, overhead because any thing you insert updates or delete the data in the table all the indexes have to be updated all the indexes have to be updated so only create indexes for those fields which are required and not for unnecessary fields so these are the things related to the objects which are additionally available while creating a database and working with the database okay See why, uh, Arvind, you said view cannot include a parameter. See why create a view? You cannot use here parameter while creating the view. But when you are creating a store procedure, which is using that view, the store procedure can have parameters. Okay, so while creating this, you don't have require a parameter here. of that view you want to create a procedure where you can have the parameters okay clear okay. 
Which one of the following statement with characteristics of a relational database? All columns in the table, a row in a table represents a single rows in the same table can contain different columns. A row in a table with a single instance of an entity. Which SQL statement is used to query tables and return data? Select. What is the index? A structure that enables queries to locate rows in a table quickly. Virtual table, predefined the structure. So we saw the basis things about RDBS steps. Now we see what are the Azure services for relational database. What are the services available for relational database? So we have got SQL on Azure Virtual Machine. So what is a virtual machine on C on Azure? See, like suppose in the on-premise environment, you are using your computer, for example. Now, when you're using your computer, you're using the hard disk, you're using the operating system, you're using the databases, you're using the different software, and all those things. So that is your own computer. Now, your machine, for example, is having a Windows operating system. Windows operating system. Now suppose you want to do a project, which is the Linux. You want to do something in the project, which is using the Linux operating system. So you are not going to format your Windows operating system to Linux machine and vice versa. So one way is that you create a virtual machine where the workloads have, where we have what on that virtual machine, we have the Linux operating system and all the software which are used on the Linux operating system to do something. And then put that into a, onto your machine and then run that So that is a virtual machine. Now, similarly, virtual machines can be created in Azure. Similarly, a virtual machine can be created in Azure. Why Azure? Because Azure is a cloud computing environment, and we want to use something which is On premise, not on premise, but something else. On premise, we have got a multiple. But in Azure, we want to use a virtual machine to create something. A identical scenario I want to put up in the virtual environment. So I create a that is correct. You can connect 
to a machine virtually remotely but that is still on premise na we can what you said uh, bhavesh what you said is that we cannot see physically but we can work on the computer virtually on the remotely we can say but see the purpose of a virtual machine and the purpose of azure is what try to understand that see if you are saying that something you are doing on your virtual machine now tomorrow suppose your operating system for a particular application you require 64 gb of ram for example you require 64 gb of ram so you have to upgrade your machine or not you have to upgrade your machine correct then after after some times further you want to further increase the ram so that how many times you do that so the scaling of the application we put we leave it on the azure azure will scale up scale down your application depending on the requirement depending on the requirement azure will scale up scale down your application because if you do it it will do it will cost you and then suppose after uh, setting the environment to 64 gb of ram and then after 3 months that ram is not required so you have to scale down the things na so azure does this for you automatically but does this for you automatically scale up scale down and virtual machines are same way for some application you require a virtual machine with an operating system called linux use a virtual machine so that it can be later on scale up scale down and so on so that way i am saying that a virtual machine can be used for anything so some people i mean to say sql server is there now if you are doing an application today doing programming in a, and your database is required is thing sql server 2014 now you get another application where you require sql server 2020 so how many times you keep on changing your machine with the different versions of sql server so that's why we take the help of cloud you keep a virtual machine build up easily and which your version you want you can use that version so we have got a virtual machine running azure with the installation of sql server the use of virtual machines it as an ias infrastructure as a service and we create development and test scenarios and we don't want to buy on premises and we can easily do what lift and shift for existing application then we can scale up platform or virtual server is a allocating new memory queue power space and so on that's a virtual thing is required the guarantees compatible to sql server on from my custom handling everything operating some upgrade some upgrade setups paid to the server of virtual machine running the cost so pay you go when you use it how much you use it that much only will be otherwise don't you that the advantage of azure cost that 
So we have got one scenario where we have what SQL Server Azure machine. Then we have got Azure SQL Managed Instance. So here we have got Azure SQL Managed Instance. So that is a SQL Server instance given to us for our application. So if we have a small application or so whatever it is, we are not we don't want to purchase actual SQL Server. You know how much is the Microsoft charges for the rights and all those things. So directly you keep on creating a man, create a managed instance and use it. And then you have got SQL Server database. So that way we have got different services available on the cloud for SQL Server. SQL Server using the virtual machine, SQL Server managed instance, or SQL Server database. Then we have got Azure database services for open source. So we have got different data available for open source. Azure database for MySQL, Azure database for MariaDB, Azure database for PostgreSQL. So MySQL is also a database, MariaDB is also a database, and PostgreSQL is also a database. MySQL is basically used in Linux, Apache, MySQL, and the application type of architecture that is called a LAMP, L-A-M-P. Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. MariaDB is a database which is compatible with Oracle database. And Database Postgre is a service in Microsoft Cloud based on the Postgre SQL community release. You want to use SQL Server, so we have got the different instances available for SQL Server family. We want to use open source databases, MySQL or MariaDB, Postgre SQL. We can use them on the cloud premises. Okay, now let us see one small demo here of using Azure database. So we have got here labs available. And for performing these labs, we require a Azure subscription. So in lab, we'll just see something related to SQL database. Just one minute, huh? we'll just. Thank 
Am I audible? Hello. Hello, am I audible? So here in Azure portal, how to use SQL Survey database? This demo is there. So now, first thing is that we go to the Azure portal. So this is the Azure portal. There we have to create the different types of resources. What are there? Create the different types of services. Basically, anything you want, you can do in Azure portal. Only thing required is what a subscription. You require a subscription. So for getting the subscription. One way is that this should be an MCP. It should be MCP, so you get a subscription and you can connect to the Azure portal. And the other way is that uh, you can use your credit card, which will be chargeable to you. Approximately hundred dollars you can use. Once your hundred dollars are over, you cannot connect. But whatever work you do here, that is chargeable. Like you see in my case, scenario for example, see seven thousand three hundred and fifty rupees credit remaining. This is subscription for the once it. 7,000 over, I will be getting the subscription again because I'm MCP, so we get updated every day. Different ways are there how you can access your business. So, this We are connected to the portal. Now we have to create a resource. See, a resource in Azure can be anything. A resource can be anything. Like here, if I say create a resource, see, what do you want to create? It up. You have to create a what? You want to create control server. Anything, whatever you want, you can select from it. So these are different resources which are available in the AI machinery. What you want to work with in the security? What you want to create? So these are different resources available which are ready-made in Azure. As per the requirement, we have to select them. Okay, so.
So it is now what? We create a Azure SQL. Create a resource from the upper left corner and search for Azure SQL. So Here you have got Azure SQL, Azure SQL, Azure Managing Instances, Azure ARP, Azure SQL in Spool, SQL Database. So many things are here. That just now in the slides. So we select Azure SQL. What do you want to create? A managing instance, a virtual machine, a SQL database. So here, if you select the virtual machine, so it will tell us the details about the virtual machine, so imagine instance, database. So we say create a database. Okay. Now here, subscription. What subscription are you going to use? So this is the MSDN subscription. And it has to create a group. So we create a resource group, say equal group. In today's date, 25. To enter the database name, enter the server name. All these specifications we have to give here. That is say adventure say, database name adventures. Select server. We create a server that is a database server. This server, the name we are just seeing here, this discuss server name is already in use. My server and such location where you want to store this in which location East USA, South Central, West USA, Asia Pacific area, North Europe. Yay. So, whichever area, which is the area you want, you can select here. Authentication. Use Microsoft Entra authentication or use SQL and Microsoft Entra authentication or use SQL authentication. We select use SQL authentication simple and say admin user. Username is admin user. Password. The password we created and our server is created. Okay. So here, the environment, what are you going to use? Development or production, we skip that information. Backup and storage, local, zonal, or geo. We say local reader and backup storage.
security information. So this way we have to fill up the requirement as per our review and create. So now it is deploying the database with our specifications in Azure. Bhavesh, you have given, uh, how can we get MSDN subscription, correct? MSDN subscription, you have to be MCT, Microsoft Certified Trainer. Then you'll get the MSDN subscription. You have to be a MSDN. MCT, then you'll get the subscription. Otherwise, without this, you can still use this uh, portal with 100 uh, uh, credit with $100. Okay. So now, here all the server database, the things are getting loaded up. Now my, everything has been deployed. So I say go to the resources. So here the group name, the server name, the connection string, the subscription you are using, subscription ID. So your server name is my server Saj. And database is Adventure Works. Now I go to query editor and I log in here, admin user and password, password what I gave. Okay, so now I have created the equal database where I have got tables, views, and store procedures. So I can create a table here. The 
I can create views, I can store data. So I can give the commands here, create table info. So I just give a command here, create table info, ID, primary key, name, and and I say run the query. So here see table is created as info. I refresh my window. So the table is created with the three columns, ID, name, and age. Then I fire the insert command. Then I say select star from info and run the query. The one record whichever I added is displayed here. So this is how I mean you can use SQL Server on Azure. You can create the tables or you can load the data from an existing set of demos and whatever things are there and work on that. See the subscription what is there that is given to you for just one month or hundred dollars credit. See basically 
that is first of all free of cost so they want you to use these things and then learn the concepts and try all the things here but if you see here for example i'll just show you so it is a uh, you get services for 12 months 200 credit you get different i mean uh, options are available here so you can use azure virtual machine for 12 months linux machines for 12 months databases throughout so as subscription different uh, things you can use it or pay as you go that is as and when you want to do something that much you i am already what is it you know, as and when whatever you use it that much you have to pay so that way if you see azure is not free that free in azure neither in aws any cloud uh you take up either you take up azure or google or aws nothing is free initially they'll give you something free other you have to try out
Okay, hello, I'm back. Okay, so this was just a small demo here, how to use uh, Azure SQL databases. So like that, uh, we keep on seeing some more demos on different concepts here as we progress gradually, okay? So any issues or any problems you have? Also, shall move forward. Okay. So, so what we hear is, uh, we'll, uh, it's one fifteen, correct? So we'll break up for lunch and join back at two o'clock. Or you want to have a lunch afterwards? Okay, so we'll join back at two o'clock and then we'll continue with our discussion. So any problems, any doubts, you are free to ask me. Okay. So we break for lunch and join back at two o'clock. 